everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the September Outlook. Can you believe that it's September already? I'm just stopping and thinking about that actually because this year seems to have gone by really fast. I know we say that every year and as we age it just goes faster and faster but yeah it's it's gone by pretty quick so I think it's always good to really stop and think wow we have come so far. Now if you know your moon sign what I suggest you do is click click on the quick links below or the jump links, quick links, jump links. Click on those below, that way you can head straight to your reading and get straight into it. So if you don't know your moon sign, I'll also provide a link on how to find that out. So without further ado, Aries moon, welcome Aries moon. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at your faster moving planets. We're going to do a Saturn check-in. We haven't talked about Saturn for a little while. I think it's been at least a couple of months. So we're going to see how Saturn is. I think that's going to be good. And we're also going to do a little Jupiter check-in. Something different there. Something new, something different. You know me, I like to shake it up a bit. I like things to be a bit different here and there. So wait till you see what I've got for Jupiter. All right, let's take a look at what's happening uh, in your chart. So we've got Sun-Mercury conjunction happening in the 5th. It's really interesting, their movement, they move together. They move together, um, you know, quite quite nicely. And as they do, you know, I mean, they are close. Um, but they, they are particularly together at, at this point. They're basically conjunct in both houses. Um, sun, let's have a look at the sun. Okay, so... Sun and Mercury both, they're not particularly thrilled to be in the fifth house. Um, both Sun and Mercury, it could be a bit of um, a drain on your health, basically, energy drain. You might be feeling more tired than usual. Uh, it's very possible. <clears throat> Due to the Sun, there could even be issues in your relationship with children or being creative you know sometimes when the sun is in the fifth house our creativity dries up um that's that's quite a classic placement there mercury arguments with the spouse you know that kind of thing can happen uh also to do with the sun seniors might question your work a bit more than usual um <clears throat> you might feel that people are on your case but if we have a look here things are going to get a lot better for both Sun and Mercury. Uh, there should be a relief to your health, you should have some more energy. Um, you know, if you've been having arguments with co-workers, any of that, that should lessen, that should start to drop away. Your earnings should really pick up. I mean, Mercury, Mercury loves being in the fifth. So, you know, success, progress, um, your health should get a boost. Income should be good if you're self-employed income should go up, that kind of thing. So there's a lot to look forward to and that's after um, September 18th. Okay, so up until the 18th, I should have said that at the start, shouldn't I? Up until the 18th, they're together, Mercury, Sun, and they're kind of, they're not thrilled to be where they are, but then when they move after September 18th, about there, I'm being a bit loose with the timings um, because I was looking at both of them, uh, things should get a lot better things should get a lot better. So after the middle of the month, things should be really good. Uh, Venus all month is in your seventh house. Yeah, not a great placement. I will be honest there. Uh, Venus doesn't like to be in the seventh. Uh, she doesn't have a good time there. And the other thing is that due to the retrograde action, Venus is going to be there till mid-November. So Venus is spending a long time here. Okay, so this is one to be aware of that there could be some challenges to do with your relationships, especially relationship with your sweetheart, with your significant other, uh, co-workers. Yeah, you want to be careful of all that. Your expenses might be higher. Um, good news though, possibility of recognition from people who are higher up. So while the sun might be having some issues at the start of the month, 
um, you know, there's something to look forward to all around, I think, really, in the later part of the month uh, when it comes to your work. Things should be should be okay. And especially if you are able to, um, you know, if you're able to pause <laughs> and if you're able to, to take care of the relationships in your life, um, you know, with Venus here, it's just going to require a lot more patience and, and I guess sensitivity, empathy, you're probably good at that. Aries moon. Well, Maybe you're quite full on. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I think it should be all right. Saturn's in the ninth for you till January 2020. This, yeah, if, if there's an overall feeling of um, feeling unsettled, feeling that something's not quite as it should be, this could be it. It could be a Saturn uh you might be feeling unsettled it may require you to change jobs frequently that is something that could be possible there long distance travels are possible um yeah definitely absolutely that's the ninth house saturn he's at home there till jan 2020 so i mean if your work includes long distance travels um that would be fantastic that would be really good. But one of the great things and great areas where you can make a lot of progress at this time is committing to the path of spirituality in a really conscious way, which you are doing by watching a video like this. You know, you're tuning into the stars. Clearly you care about all that kind of thing, which is so wonderful. Uh, and just commit deeper, you know. Um, there might be some books that you want to check out. There might be some talks that you want to go to, uh, however you bring spirituality into your hectic modern life, that is an absolutely wonderful thing to do. I've got a note here that it's a great time to decondition from your past and decondition from any programming from society, from culture, from parents, from films. You know, um, a lot of our ideas about love and relationships actually come from movies and films and TV shows that we used to watch as a kid. So I think this is a really great time to examine, um, examine your heart, your soul, how it's built, what everything means to you and the meanings that you apply to things. You know, we've got control over this. Now for Jupiter, what I decided to do this month was something different. Now, you know, you know me, you know I like to change things up. So I think last time we did Rahu Ketu Axis and I think we did Jupiter and for each of those I asked a question and I got you to ponder something that you could journal or something like that. What do we have this time? This time I have something very special for you. It's a little treat. It is Caroline Mace, her archetype cards. This is absolutely sensational. Now, I do not use cards in my readings as a professional astrologer. When you go to my website and you book me for a session, I never use cards. I only use the Vedic astrology system, the sidereal Vedic astrology system. That is all that I use. But uh, I happen to have a lot of card decks. And um, over the years, you know, I've collected a few. And I, I quite just like it. Sometimes, you know, once every couple of weeks or so, it's a kind of um, fun thing to do where you just draw a card and you reflect on it. I've learnt loads from the, the booklets that come with these decks. So for each sign this month, I am picking out a card. And for you guys, I picked out the storyteller. So this is a message and I tuned in. And when I tuned in, I kind of went, okay, Jupiter, what do you want Aries Moon to know? So there's some message in here for you, right? You got the storyteller. Have a look at that. It's a really beautiful card, actually. I really love this one. And I will read you exactly what she says. So that way, this is a richer mini reading because it's coming from me and it's coming from Caroline Mace. So the storyteller, she says, relays <clears throat> wisdom, relays wisdom and foolishness, mistakes and successes. Fact and fiction on a plane that's often heightened beyond ordinary awareness. Wow, I'd like to go there. 
including a metaphoric level of teaching. Absolutely. I mean, symbolism, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here. We're looking at the, the symbolic things. You know, Venus, she's not comfortable in the seventh house. So we're, we're um, enjoying a story right now, <laughs> a story told by the stars. Uh, the storyteller reflects a desire to impose order on what sometimes what sometimes seems like a chaotic and random universe. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is random. This has been randomly picked for you. I was going to draw them live on the camera, but then I thought, no, oh, maybe that's a bit cheesy. <laughs> um, but I like when other people do that. Okay. Story, shadow storyteller manifests when we can't resist making up a story to conceal something we don't want to be truthful about or misusing a skill to our own advantage when sharing information. That is really interesting. And I'm kind of getting the vibe to really say that how does a storyteller operate in your life? Um, a good example of this is a trial lawyer who I've forgotten his name. But he said in an interview that being a trial lawyer is like being in a storytelling competition. And I thought that was a fantastic quote and a fantastic idea. And really, I mean, how stunning is that? So how do you use stories in your organization or in your job or in what it is that you do every day or your creativity, in fact? Definitely something to explore Aries Moon. So I hope you've enjoyed your outlook for this month. And we are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, what we're going to do, Taurus Moon, is we're going to quickly go through your planets and then I've got a little special extra something that I'm going to take you through. So you know me, you know how I like to change things up. We are changing things up. We're doing something a little bit different today. So Sun and Mercury is conjunct... Uh, in the fourth house for you moving into the fifth house so September 18 I was watching their movement and they kind of go together and then around September 18 they move into the fifth house there so now what does this mean for you um, yeah it's not Mercury's not too thrilled to be doing either of these Sun um, kind of things aren't great at home uh, Sun doesn't particularly like being in the fourth um, Sun doesn't seem to be too thrilled in the fifth either. Seniors will scrutinize your work. It could be a health drain. Really, really, it's time to look after yourself energetically. Um, Mercury's having a good time here in the fourth. Now, did I mention that September 18? I hope I did. September 18, they're moving. So up until September 18, we've got new opportunities, income growth, great time for um, further education, executive education. If you don't have time to be doing, you know, a one year, two year master's, there are some amazing eight week courses and things like that. Um, so it's a great time for that. Not that you'll do an eight week course before September 18. I realize that. But, um, but hey, I mean, it's always a good time to take on further study, really. There are some amazing online courses. I have done a few. Uh, but anyway, great time to take up something like that, I think, um, regardless of this transit. But you've got an energy dip coming after the September 18th, and that matches your sun as well. Really, Taurus Moon, I do think that if you're not already doing some regular exercise or something like that, this is really the time to bring that in, even if it's just like a two-minute plank per day right? It's just something. And then you've also got to, something to feel good about that. Oh, good. I did something for myself. You know, I carved five minutes to do something for myself. Uh, or it might be a case of taking the stairs instead of taking an elevator. Um, try to build it into your day. If you can't, um, you know, if you can't find the time. Let's have a look here, Venus. Oh, ouch. Yeah, this is not great either. Venus in the sixth. She doesn't like being in the sixth. Um, I think it's probably her worst placement, actually. Uh, you know, and in a birth chart, Venus is debilitated in the sixth. So, yeah, and look, Venus is going to be here till mid-November. This is a long transit. And why is that? Normally, Venus is quite quick. 
but she's going to retrograde so she's going to spend a lot of time in this uh, sixth house for you so this is really going to be a time to be patient <laughs> to be strong to be um, sort of to take your time in relationships okay because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be a people pleaser or a doormat or any of those things either right so it is finding that balance it is finding the balance of how to be you um i've got to note here you might want to avoid long distance travel if you if you possibly can if you have to don't worry about it go you'll be fine um but yeah it's it's a time to ride out you know i have been through venus retrograde before i observed it last year and some people say don't make any decisions relating to beauty at that time and i remember um buying a handbag at that time like okay it was a cheap one like it was like 10 quid or something but i mean i thought two or three times about it and it was the best purchase i ever made so i don't know i used that bag for ages um, but they do say do hold off on beauty related things i don't say that i think you know if you want something don't worry about it uh, mental stress and tension yeah venus i mean look th there's just an unsettled energy there um, that's around for you so don't worry too much about it uh, let's have a look at what saturn's doing we'll do a saturn check-in see if there's any good news here not a huge amount um saturn eighth house till jan 2020 <clears throat> again we've got um saturn affecting your health quite possibly providing an energy drain um you may feel that you're not getting the support of your friends uh you may have conflicts uh, at work with friends um people don't sing your praises you're working so hard you're working flat out but you know people aren't noticing that type of thing um definitely it's really big health theme Taurus moon um so I think you're gonna have to carve out time for rest as well learn how your body feels when it's truly at rest do know that um so work out how you can truly truly rest and work out how you can bring in some regular exercise now the exciting thing that i'm doing for every single sign is i've picked a card for each of you from the caroline mace archetype cards deck which is one of my favorite decks of all time no i don't use these cards for readings when i when you go on my website and book me for a reading i never use cards i only use this idea of vedic uh, system i use parashara's light to be precise um but let's have a look here i drew a card i i tuned into taurus moon i said okay jupiter if you have a message for taurus moon what do you want to say and i drew the card messiah so let's bring up this card where is it here we go this is a beautiful card look at that messiah okay so reflect on the messages that are here for you just i don't know how this fits in with you but you'll know so uh i'll read the notes from caroline may so that way you get you know a mini reading from me and from caroline today okay so and she's a new york times best-selling person so do check her out uh, messiah associated with the embodiment of divine power and a mission to save humanity wow. tends to become obsessed with spiritual purpose convinced that god needs him or her to do something shadow messiah is convinced of his divine mission and becomes obsessed to the point of psychosis wow jim jones or charles manson okay i didn't know i'd be talking about charles manson today um look for a long-term desire to save people especially in large numbers with the possibility of self-delusion in this regard wow okay so it's really sort of intense rescuer kind of a thing going on here i did study all these archetypes um one time some years ago but um gosh i haven't seen this one for a long time redeem a savior yeah and look I tell you what with saturn in the eighth there if you are um say for example a spiritual person who is transitioning out of a corporate career and into a 
kind of spiritual based, help based, um, you know, service based. If, if you're wanting to start up anything like that, uh, you may well be doing that because Saturn in the eighth indicates career transition. My advice to you if you're in that category is be balanced and um, yeah, I mean, Messiah, you know, it's kind of, this thing is kind of saying, you know, don't, um, you're going to want to try and be all things to all people, but you might not be able to. And with all these energy dips and health drains and all these kind of things that's going on here, I think one of the key messages for you is slow down and um, don't work yourself too hard. Keep working, but don't, don't push yourself. I think the universe is actually giving you some time to breathe. So take care, Taurus Moon. We are going to meet Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, Gemini Moon, welcome. Welcome to your reading. Now we're going to go through um, the faster moving planets. This time we're going to do a Saturn check-in. We haven't checked into Saturn for a while. And I've got something new, something exciting, something different. So Sun and Mercury are conjunct and they are in the third house in se during September 18, around that period. It's not precise, guys, because I'm looking at two planets together. But around the September 18 mark, they move into the fourth. So what are these two doing as they do their dance? Um, it's looking like... Okay, it's a bit of a mixed bag for you guys. Sun, um, professional progress promotions, pay rise, this is really good, up until about September 18. Then Sun moves into the fourth. Sun's not thrilled to be there. Um, things may not be great at home. Work might be stressful. There might be more tensions, that kind of thing. Mercury is kind of the opposite. Mercury is until September 18. You know, you might be experiencing an energy drain. Uh, you might need to look after your health. Um... Then what do we have? September 18 onwards. This is good. Mercury. Mercury is going to hopefully bring in some new opportunities, um, new opportunities to make money, which would be great, and a possibility to learn new skills, executive education, further study, all that kind of thing. So that's looking really cool. Oh, and this is beautiful. Lucky you, Gemini Moon. This is great. Venus, all month in the fifth house. Uh, due to the retrograde, She's going to be there till mid-November. So you're very lucky because she, she's kind of going out of the fifth house and then she comes back in and then off she goes. So you get all of that period of time until mid-November. This is a great time for love. Venus loves to be here. Let's face it, she's crazy about this place. Uh, love, romance, great time to fall in love. You will be more attractive. Wow, this is good. Um, great time for socializing. Great time to have fun. Lucky you. This is awesome. Uh, now, if there's any tension in your life, I'm having a look at Saturn here, and Saturn is going to be in your seventh house until January 2020. So we're doing our little Saturn check-in because we haven't checked in with Saturn for a couple of months. Um, yeah, any tensions, you can possibly blame it on Saturn. Um, you know, it, this is a time where patience and hard work is quite possibly needed, and especially if you're married. So, I mean, I'm seeing if you're single, terrific. If you're married, you might need to do some work on your relationship uh, and how you are in your relationship, how you show up in your relationship. It's not about changing the other. It's about It's about working out how to be ourselves and how to accept the other being themselves, you know. Everybody's free to be themselves at all times. So this could be smooth for salaried workers. So if you're in a job, uh, corporate situation, great, fantastic. Um, if you run your own business, there might be some hard work to do. So that's, that's how that is. Now, what's the exciting thing that I have for you this time? Well, I've got the Caroline Mace archetype card. Gemini Moon, sorry about that. I think the camera stopped working. So I'm going to pick up where I think I left off. Now, did I leave off talking about Jupiter and that we're going to draw a card from 
Caroline Mace's archetype cards. Um, I don't use these in my readings. If you ever get a reading from me, I only use Sidereal Vedic Astrology, but I have lots of these card decks and I thought it'd be fun to incorporate this into a reading. So that way, like a monthly reading, not a reading reading. Um, I wanted to incorporate it so that, you know, you get a bit of something from me and you get a bit of something from New York Times bestselling Caroline Mays. Now, uh, I tuned in to Gemini Moon. I asked Jupiter, what message, if you want me to give Gemini Moon a message, what message would you want me to give? And I got the card Midas Miser. Isn't that interesting? Let's have a look there. I hope you can see these. I should probably check that. I, I'm sure it's probably come up as a green blur, but it looks really cool. I can promise you that. Um, Midas or Miser. The word Midas always makes me think of Warren Buffett, who seems to have the Midas touch. So let's see what messages are here for you. Uh, Midas is associated with entrepreneurial or creative ability. Yeah, everything he touches turns to gold. Warren Buffett, there we go. Uh, I haven't read these for ages, by the way. Um, Miser creates wealth by hoarding money and emotions. But I, I drew this like before the I drew all of them before the reading. Uh, and don't worry, I just picked the first card that came for you. This is not orchestrated. <laughs> I could have, I could have like drawn them live, but I felt like eh, it might be a bit cheesy. Okay. Miser. Now, so we had Midas, Midas touch, very good. Everything he touches turns to gold. Miser creates wealth by hoarding money and emotions at the expense of others and refusing to share them. Wow, actually, God, I'm learning something from this. I'm reading that again. Miser creates wealth by hoarding money. Yeah, I tell you what. And emotions at the expense of others and refusing to share them. That's a good one. Challenge to learn generosity is inherent in both. Absolutely. Uh, how is it with the Midas touch? Surely they're, I don't know. Hmm. Warren Buffett's very giving, isn't he? Anyway, Shadow Midas Miser uses wealth creating gifts only for personal gain. Yeah. And needs to control all forces for fear of losing it. Wow. That is, yep. Yes, I'm observing some of that. Uh, thankfully, not in myself, although I'm sure I'm guilty of every single terrible thing out there. But um, but, but I'm seeing it in uh, some, some people that I know. All right, it says, look for a pattern of creating wealth and or confronting how far you're willing to go to create it. Also, for a pattern of difficulty sharing wealth. Wow, okay. Well, now that's a message, Gemini Moon. So I hope that gives you something to reflect on. Look, don't take any of this like as a personal thing or something you need to work on. No, it's just it's just food for thought, something to think about, something to reflect on. You know, and I think that's the joy of these mini readings. You get to kind of pause and think and get a new perspective. All right, well, so that's what I have for you today, Gemini Moon. It has been lovely chatting with you. And we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Welcome to your reading. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at your planets. We're going to do a Saturn check-in, and then I've got something really special for you that's quite new that I haven't done before, so I hope you like it. Right, let's take a look at Sun-Mercury conjunction. They are conjunct in your second house, and September 18, they're going to move together into the third house. Now, uh, it might not precisely be September 18, but it's around there that the two of them go together. So this is looking like a bit of a mixed bag for you, Cancer Moon, a little bit like Gemini Moon. You've got a similar thing going on. Um, so the sun, there are possibly financial hurdles that you're going to have to deal with until September 18, troubles with family, friends. Um, it's not smooth, right? Uh, but then with the sun anyway, you're going to have professional progress, promotion, pay rise, if you're self-employed, more clients, this kind of thing. Uh, this is looking quite good. Let's have a look at Mercury. Mercury's got kind of the opposite thing going on. So until September 18, Mercury's happy. 
and you're looking at a boost to your income, appreciation from your co-workers, that sort of thing. Uh, but then after September 18, you're looking at Mercury may give you an energy drain, um, might impact your health a little bit. It's just a time to go slow, to rest if you have to. Um, don't push yourself, right? So a bit of a mixed bag. They're both doing opposite things, even though they're both moving together. So that's quite interesting. Venus, uh, all, all month is in the fourth house. Oh, this is fantastic. This I'm so happy for you, Cancer Moon. This is great. Um, all month, Venus is going to be uh, in your fourth house. And due to the retrograde, she's going to stay there till November, mid-November. It's a long time. So she's kind of almost going to go out and then she goes back and then she... It's fantastic because if you want Venus, you want her here. You want her in the fourth house. This is a time of wish fulfillment. Uh, great time for property. Great time for investments great social scene, new friends, perhaps a bit of romance. I mean, it's not classic fourth house stuff, but I'm throwing it in there anyway. <laughs> um, and hell, why not? Saturn's in your sixth house. Oh my gosh, Cancer Moon, I am happy for you. Let me tell you, if Sun and Mercury don't give you too much, Venus and Saturn are doing wonders for you. This is a really good time, Cancer Moon. Enjoy this. I'm so happy for you. Uh, Saturn's in your sixth house until January 2020. This is wonderful. So it's a really great placement. Saturn loves being here. You've come out of Sati Sati. Thank goodness for that. And you're being rewarded. And, of course, Saturn rewards people, you know, sixth, well, third, sixth, and 11th from the moon. So you're one of the lucky people. Your health should be good. Relationships with family should improve. Um, this is a time to topple enemies. You know, such ancient language, topple enemies. How fantastic. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's a good time for promotion. It's a good time to expand yourself. It's a good time to get out there on social media. And who are the modern day enemies? They are trolls. So trolls should be a thing of the past for you. Um, relationships with family improve. New work opportunities, new sources of income. This is stunning, Cancer Moon, um, and I'm loving this for you. Now let's have a look at Jupiter. So what I did this month, well, what I've done for all of the signs is I've drawn from the archetype cards, Caroline Mace archetype cards. I absolutely love this deck. I've drawn a card for every single sign, and for your sign, by the way, I don't use um, cards in my readings. When you hire me as a um, professional Vedic astrologer, I don't use cards. I only use the sidereal Vedic system and, of course, my intuition. Um, but, uh, you know, the sidereal system combined with my intuition, I think that's how I should phrase that. Um, but what card did I draw for you? I drew the visionary. This is stunning. This is a really good card. It's been a while since I've looked at this. So let's have a look at the card. There's the card there. It's absolutely beautiful. If ever there was a Jupiterian color, that is it. So this is what Jupiter wants to say to you. These are the messages. So I'm just going to read them out. So this way, you know, you get a, a, a bit of a, an overview from me and you get a little bit of wisdom from the New York Times bestselling Caroline Mays. Uh, visionary. So the visionary lets you imagine possibilities that are beyond the scope of your individual life and that benefit all of society. The visionary brings into view what could be if certain choices are made or what is inevitable given choices that have already been made. The shadow visionary manifests a willingness to sell your prophetic abilities to the highest bidder. Ooh or to alter your vision to make it more acceptable. Wow. In extreme cases, tainted visions may lead societies into murderous or destructive rampages. Fantastic. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be reading that today. I drew the cards earlier, but I didn't read these. I thought I'd read them out loud uh, on, the, on the recording. It says here, look for long-term passion to see beyond obvious or momentary actions to perceive a larger pattern. And I mean, look, I'm kind of thinking about the visionary in the context of your reading. And to me, this is saying expand your vision for what's possible in life, um, especially with Saturn in the sixth house there till January 2020. I mean, this is a time for you to be um, 
broadening your horizons, you know, you could become a property investor, you could start a business, you could start a side business, you could start a YouTube channel, you could, um, what else could you do? I mean, there's just so much that you can do. Um, and really, it's time to think big, dream big, you know, broaden that vision, really expand it out. You've got a lot of planetary energy supporting you, especially, I mean, the big guns, Saturn. You know, I mean, he's the one. Um, and, of course, Venus is, is having a nice long transit there. So, sure, she's helping out too. I think this is fantastic, Cancer Moon. I, I'm really excited for you. Okay, I could get carried away. I shouldn't. I, it's been great chatting with you, Cancer Moon. I'm now going to say hello to Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you for joining. Now let's take a look at your faster moving planets. We're going to check in with Saturn and then I've got a little special something for you for Jupiter. So Sun and Mercury are conjunct in your first house. September 18, they both move into the second house. It might not be precisely September 18. It's kind of thereabouts. I decided to read the two together because they're moving in that sort of way. So let's have a look. Okay, I think this is a bit of a mixed bag. Um, they're kind of slightly doing opposite things. So Sun being in the first house till September 18, you want to be careful with your health. Um, you, know, you might have a bit of an energy drain. You might be tired. Uh, your financial stability might be compromised. In what way exactly? I mean, maybe you're spending more. Maybe opportunities aren't... Um, going as you would like them to. Uh, I had a client actually who, yeah, she's had some things stall for her financially. Um, so definitely this can be a bit of a thing. Um, yeah, okay, that just kind of continues after September 18 as well. So financial hurdles, troubles with family, friends, so relationships, you want to be looking at that. And it is family mostly um, being second house there have a look at Mercury. Okay, so Mercury is not too great either until September 18. Um, there might be stress, financial troubles. This is really a time to be wise with money. Um, but after September 18, you are getting some relief, um, boost to income, appreciation from co-workers. This is good. We're liking this. So that's better, September 18th. But you've got beautiful, beautiful Venus and, okay, Saturn, yeah, we'll get to Saturn. Venus is fantastic. All month she's in your third house and she is going to retrograde here. So she's going to be in there till mid-November. Wow, this is fantastic. So lucky you, you're one of the lucky recipients of a good Venus um, because I tell you what, some people are not getting that. Um and it's longer because Venus normally, shoom, she moves. But because she's doing a little backward dance, she's staying there for a while till mid-November. So wish fulfillment, great time for property, great time for investments. You know, your confidence should be at an all-time high. Um, great time for socializing. You know, great to really just enjoy your social scene. This could be a time where you pick up new hobbies. You might, you might learn new skills. Uh, you might need, meet new friends. So, so this is really nice, um, definitely. Saturn in the fifth house till January 2020. What are we looking at here? I mean, yeah, you're going to... So those of you who are single, that's really nice with the Venus uh, all month in the third. But if you're in a relationship, then you're going to have to... As I've got in my notes, uh, remain strong and patient to get through. Um, yeah. I mean, it is relationship with your long-term partner and with your children uh, could be could be tricky or your partner's children. Um, and even, I mean, creative projects as well. It's not a great time to invest. Uh, if you do invest, be extra careful. Really read any prospectuses or, you know, I saw this um, ICO initial coin offering thing and 
wow, it was uh, the website just didn't convince me, you know, and I don't have money to invest anyway. So <laughs> um, I really don't. <laughs> I really don't have money. It's kind of flying through my hands at the moment. Uh, let's have a look. So avoid investments or stock market if you can. But I mean, look, don't don't be put off. This is till January 2020. You might want to do su such things. Take your time. With Saturn, it's about you need, you need to take your time. You need to be extra thorough. Um, students work hard. Yeah, students will have to work harder in order to keep the concentration good. It, this can be a... Saturn can... Sometimes Saturnian energy can be a bit of a background fuzz that just sort of... It's like... can be a sort of background anxiety, really. Um, but you're a Leo moon. You know, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have too much problem with that. You're Leo. You can you can do anything, right? Okay, Jupiter. In tuning into Jupiter this time, I got the vibe to pick uh, an archetype card from Caroline Mace. It's an absolutely wonderful deck, and I picked a card for each sign before doing the recording, and I'm going to read out. Um, what's here because each month you know me I want to do something different every single time well I may not be able to do something radically different every single time but I'll mix it up is what I'll do okay so this time I thought I'd include the cards by the way I don't use cards in my readings when you hire me as a professional Vedic astrologer when I do a session or a reading for you I never use cards just the astrology and my intuition okay what card did I draw for you I drew the priest now let's have a look at what is written here for this. So the priest is defined by ritual of ordination, the official capacity to facilitate spiritual vows, commitments to divine authority. That's quite incredible. Actually on that, um, I've actually been hired uh, myself to officiate. Um, I've done... Uh, baby naming day I've done two funerals and a wedding so yeah I've um, I've been hired to do this kind of thing and I love doing it um, so god it's such an honor you know and for me actually oddly enough someone told me that you should just specialize in weddings but actually funerals are just um, utterly phenomenal to 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 be there to do that for people is just um pretty amazing it's a real honor is what I'm trying to say okay this is about you not about me priest <laughs> um, I just got carried away there serves as spiritual channel of divine energy for others you see others uh, must represent the teachings through personal example the shadow priest manifests as the inability to live according to one's own teachings especially in lapses of personal morality or using ordained authority to control people for personal gain. Ouch. Yeah. That is uh, shadow priests. There's some full-on stuff there. There's whole churches, uh, dare I say. I mean churches, temples, whatever. Um, look for a lifetime commitment to serving others by facilitating their spiritual rituals. Wow. Cool. So that was your um, overview, Leo Moon. That was pretty amazing. I hope that there was something needed for you there. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps it's, um, I don't know, perhaps the priest is asking for kind of more reflection and more structure. I'm kind of linking it into Saturn here. And that's a way of creativity, fifth house. Maybe you might want to consider training up in humanist services. That's what I did. I did the, so the, the funeral, the wedding I did, um, naming that they were, they were all humanist services. So these are people who are like, I'm not religious, but I want to do something special. That could be a career path for you, Leo Moon. I don't know. All right. Uh, it's been great chatting with you, Leo Moon. We're going to go into Virgo Moon now. Virgo Moon, welcome. I'm going to try and talk really quickly because I have a feeling that the camera might spontaneously combust and that would be really bad um so we're going to go through your planets we're going to do a saturn overview and then i've got something really special for you this time with jupiter okay 
So Sun and Mercury are conjunct. They're going to move from your 12th house into the first house on September 18th. Now let's have a look at what's going on here. Is this a good thing? Is this not a good thing? Okay, this is not particularly ideal. Uh, I will say that. Uh, the sun is sort of bringing about financial issues, sleeplessness, restlessness, bit of stress, bit of health, you know, we want to look at Mercury as well. This is up until September 18th. Potentially, you know, you'll be um, losing wealth. So what's that? More expenses. Uh, health might might um, be compromised. Um, relations with your spouse might be a little bit strained. Um, and then, you know, we look at after September 18, what are we looking at again with the sun? Be careful with your health. Watch uh, the stability of your finances. Just keep an eye on that. Um, same for Mercury. Stress, yeah, it's time of stress. Financial troubles, time to be wise, right? So sun, Mercury energy. You want to keep an eye on those. Venus energy is looking great. Venus all month going to be in your second house and due to the retrograde motion she's going to be there until mid-November that's a long time so she's kind of she's almost going to come out of the second house and then she just retrogrades back in there she's staying in there for quite a while uh, so this could be a time when you actually really want to spend money <laughs> this is not ideal is it because you know you've got these um, other placements where finances are a bit of an issue um, but you might want to buy new clothes and reinvent your image and um, you know all that kind of thing but this is Venus is providing beautiful harmonious energy time with family uh, time with the person that you love you know um, great time for love affairs I've just got a note here love affairs fantastic uh, and sort of all-round success let's have a look at um, Saturn in your fourth house till January 2020 yeah, I mean, this is a mixed bag sort of a thing as well. So it's not terrible, but it's not um, the most wonderful thing. It's, it's a mixed bag. It's both. So, you know, this is a time where Saturn might be testing you a little bit. You'll need to be patient, keep steady, um, keep a focused mind. There could be financial ups and downs. Be extra careful with contracts and property. Uh, and you may need hard work to realize your dreams. So that is quite a lot right there now one thing I've been doing for all signs which has been so much fun is I've been drawing an archetype card archetype cards by Caroline Mace this is a really really wonderful deck and I drew a card for you Virgo Moon I drew the card networker by the way I want to say I don't use these cards when I do my reading so when you hire me as a professional sidereal Vedic astrologer I don't use cards at all uh, I just wanted to include this to mix things up you know add, add something new add something exciting so um because each month you know i want to vary it a little bit uh okay networker so that's the card and i'm going to read to you what caroline has to say so that way you get a little bit of stuff from me and a little bit of stuff from new york times best-selling caroline mace okay so because what i did was jupiter this time instead of doing the little report I thought um, why don't I just tune in and Jupiter was kind of like get the cards out so I'm like okay all right networker uh, expands sphere of influence by forging alliances and making connections amongst vastly different groups of people how fantastic I love that that's really cool yeah, and this could well be the answer to some of the stuff that you got going on here. Um, helps develop social flexibility and empathy that seeks commonality with those who might not seem to be potential friends or allies. Yes, I mean, that is that is a classic socialising thing. It's all about the similarities and not about the differences. You know, falling in love is when you are finding similarities. And apologies, Virgo Moon, the camera just froze uh where was i so i think i was saying something about the experience of falling in love is finding the similarities between people and the experience of falling out of love is finding the differences so it's really interesting here that in networker it says expands sphere of influence by 
you know, making connections amongst vastly different groups of people and, and showing how we're all similar, I would imagine. Uh, the networker, so that was this card. I'll hold it up again so that you can see. But it's your archetypal card for the month. So according to Jupiter, so Jupiter's message to you. There's something in here that you need to hear. <laughs> um, helps develop social flexibility and empathy that seeks commonality with those who might not seem to be potential friends or allies. Again, it's that thing of looking for the similarities. Uh, messenger and communicator have skills to disseminate information and power, which you do, Virgo Moon. I mean, that you know that. You're, you're, a, you're a very communicative being. I mean, Virgo, that's Mercury and Moon. Mercury, Moon, it's the ultimate writer's combination. Uh, you are at your heart a communicator and a writer and skilled in all that kind of thing. So messenger and communicator have skills to disseminate information. and power. I mean, how perfect is that? It's networker, messenger, herald, courier, journalist, communicator. Yeah, perfect. Shadow networker merely uses connections with others for personal gain. Look for a continuing pattern of forging links with others to deliver vital information and ideas. How cool. So maybe that's kind of linking in with your Saturn there and, you know, getting you... Saturn is kind of those long-ranging, long-term habits, things that you can keep building in. Maybe it's really time to brush up that uh, professional network circle of yours um, and be starting a side business. You know, with some of these financial issues, it, it might be kind of encouraging you to look at um, establishing uh, another line of income somehow, which, believe me, I'm sure we're all working on that. Um, but, yeah, now, it's, now is always a good time to start everything. So, you know, everything happens in the now. Okay, well, Virgo, it's been great chatting, and I'll see you next time.